Hello everyone, Marsh W13 here with another hotel review and this week we are at the Nomad Hotel in Las Vegas at the Park MGM. Now the Nomad for the uninitiated is a boutique hotel within a hotel, which is a bit of a trend lately here on the Las Vegas Strip. But this particular hotel operates as a semi-independent entity with a separate check-in and a separate pool area, as I understand, even its own restaurant, but it essentially only occupies, uh, room-wise, the top floors of the uh, Park MGM property. We are on the 30th floor, I believe this is room 3067, and we have a strip view and a suite, so let's check it out. So we'll begin our tour at the entrance, and as I mentioned, uh, this is a hotel within the Park MGM, which itself was uh, recently renovated and underwent a name change from the Monte Carlo to the uh, Park MGM. And this is my first time staying at that property, and certainly I'd never even heard of the Nomad Hotel. Uh, what you'll notice is that the theme here is kind of bohemian 1920s, 1930s with some modern or postmodern touches. And that will become quite evident as we go along. So we have this little bar area here, uh, for lack of a better term, that is comprised of the typical, I'm not sure whether these are weight censored or not, they certainly sort of have the appearance with those individual compartments, but this is your typical sort of mini bar, maybe a premium version that you often see at five-star hotels. So you have a, a, a selection of what I'm sure are very expensive snacks, haven't seen the prices, and uh, some Fiji water. And just check out the intricacy of these glasses, uh, particularly given these days during the uh, COVID pandemic when you're often presented with plastic cups. Interesting glass ice bucket. Everything, again, just um, extremely detailed. Come to think of it, the furnishings and little touches in this room all over really remind me of the show Absinthe under the uh, tent here at Caesar's Palace. And that includes this door here disguised as an antique trunk. We have, this is a surprising location, I would say, for a safe, but it is deep, although not terribly tall. And then we have the mini bar, mini fridge itself, which appears to contain some additional snacks, some chocolate bars. Good idea to refrigerate those. We have a selection of Spirits, some wines, looks like some Vufkriku, champagne, some beers and seltzers and juices and waters, and it looks like some, uh, some micro beer. Now, as I mentioned, this is a suite, so as is the case with some suites on the Strip in Las Vegas, including at the Bellagio, just down the street, these suites do contain a guest bathroom or half bath. Nothing terribly special about this particular one. Looks like we have some uh, Argon bath products or something like that. But I would say that, you know, just looking at the uh, fixtures, that it again has this sort of early 20th century feel to it. Now, as we move beyond the entryway into this little sort of mini hallway, this kind of large, vacuous uh, space between the entrance and the living room, we see the first evidence of the many works of modern art that adorn this room. And most of them are photos, and I'm a huge fan of art photography. But these here at the entrance are sort of a mixture of this looks like a paint swatch sample kind of a thing. And our first uh, photo of Mini. So in this uh, naturally lit living room area, we have what looks like 
and maybe a 38 to 40 inch uh, Samsung TV behind which sits this very intricately decorated Japanese silk screen style piece uh, which is an interesting touch nice rug and the couch you, you can tell is like everything else here very very new no sagginess very 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 firm but just perfect for uh, for lounging and sort of bookends of uh, this entertainment center here we have these uh, floor lamps and then what you can tell is pretty high quality leather chairs here with this uh, table in between and there is for those curious a room service offered here and there's a QR code you can scan it looks like for those interested it is served on the weekends at least 7 to 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. we'll just get a look at uh, I'm not sure if this is the same as what is offered at in normal standard park MGM rooms but it is certainly Nomad branded one thing that I found interesting was this little amenity kit styled after what you may receive in business or first class uh, on an international flight and it is Park MGM branded now behind the living room couch and through those double doors we find the bedroom and uh, the centerpiece of which is this king bed let's test give it the old firmness test it is definitely kind of a pillow topish kind of a thing I'd, I'd give it kind of a five out of ten uh, on the sort of softness hardness scale so it's kind of a Goldilocks uh, just right kind of a situation Four very generously sized pillows and all sorts of photographic art above the headboard here, along with dimmable lights, sort of traditional uh, outlets. There's no hub. There's, well, actually, I take that back. There are uh, two USB outlets and two uh, standard electrical outlets on this side and presumably on the other side as well. Looks like a cordless telephone and pad with a Nomad branded pin, which you don't see every day any longer. Now the side tables on either side of the bed are just that. They're just tables. There are no drawers, no storage space here. In fact, we haven't really seen any storage space as of yet, but we'll explore that in a moment. Uh, when I first saw this kind of antique-ish looking uh, clock, looks like it's from a brand called Oliver Hemming, which I've never seen before. It looked like almost some sort of weather instrument or something like that, but it is in fact a clock radio, it appears, and that includes a pairable Bluetooth function. And then in the uh, interior corner here we have a soaking tub. To have a tub in the bedroom is something that is becoming more and more common in these upscale hotels for whatever reason. I guess it sort of integrates the comforts of home with uh, the living space or something like that. I'm not quite sure. No jets here, so it is just a soaking tub. More uh, Argan bath products here and some uh, towels. Now, there is a television set in this little recess area on the wall and again Samsung television with I'd say maybe a few inches smaller or near the same size as the one that we saw in the living room and 
we have a chest of drawers here. I'll show you about how much space you'll get in each drawer. Now to the left of the bathtub is the closet, which certainly seems relatively small. There is a mirror on the interior of the door. Plenty of rack space, but not a lot of hangers, really. You know, there are a variety of types of hangers, certainly, but a few of them are devoted to this MGM Resorts branded laundry bag, which I'm sure would come in handy, as well as these bathrobes. But for someone like me who just wants to hang a, a few shirts and, and pairs of pants, perhaps, there's only maybe two to three days worth of hanger allocation here. Looks like maybe an iron up there, and of course the obligatory uh, fold-out stand for your luggage that I'm not using. But as you can see, my oversized uh, checked luggage piece here, Samsonite, barely fits inside this closet. Well, I like the slippers. They are, I guess, maybe Park MGM branded, and it looks like there may be a pair of them in each, but as you can see, the left slipper has uh, the word loss and the right slipper says Vegas. So, love the localization, if you will. Now, as you would expect from a suite in a boutique, recently renovated Las Vegas hotel, there is a pretty decent bathroom here. Starting with this little nook here for makeup application or whatever. Again, all the furnishings and the sort of mosaic style tiling is just perfect. And check out the art. Théâtre de Casino des Fleurs. A lot of French language touches to the art here and something that you'll probably not see outside of a natural science museum. Some uh, genuine butterfly specimens. Now, as for the rest of the bathroom, the basin, looks like we only have maybe a day's worth, uh, for a couple at least, of towels, which is interesting. Normally you see more particularly these days when rooms maybe aren't serviced on a daily basis. We have a hair dryer. The basin itself, probably this, the same as the one that we encountered in the half bath near the entrance. The branding here suggests that this is a Leroy Brooks Limited from England faucet, which if that's true, that's makes kind of interesting. But again, the you know, even the storage containers here are extremely high quality. And you see more of this kind of cut glass, consistent with the theme of the room in general, but, but again, just a touch above what, uh, what you might expect elsewhere. And as you would expect, in addition to the bathtub in the bedroom, in the bathroom you have a walk-in shower with a rain-style shower head and nothing else particularly noteworthy. Now with respect to views available from both the bedroom and the living room, we have a strip view, which you generally do pay a premium for. And as you can see, I would say this is not necessarily the most captivating or enchanting strip view amongst the hotels lining the strip, particularly compared to, say, a cosmopolitan balcony suite that would include views of the Bellagio Fountains and the Eiffel Tower, amongst others. But uh, what you do have here that I think is somewhat unique is that you have an unobstructed view, given uh, that we're right across Las Vegas Boulevard from a portion of the strip that is lacking in tall buildings. You have unobstructed views of the mountains, which you typically only get from a non-strip view, given that mountains basically surround Las Vegas on all sides. 
But I feel like, and maybe I'm rationalizing it, but that uh, you get maybe a, a little bit of the best of both worlds with, uh, with this view. In addition to that, as you may notice here in just a moment, you have this unobstructed view of the mountains also provides optimal viewing of aircraft on final approach to, I'm assuming, runways 26 left and right at McCarran International Airport. And as you can see, you also get some at least partially visible runway, which uh, I certainly appreciate. And then there's the MGM Grand, at the base of which uh, is its world-famous mansion for high rollers. That's that uh, green, almost uh, like pagoda-topped uh, building there. And then we can see part of the New York, New York there on the far right on our side of the strip, along with, I guess they call that the, the park itself. and some rather nondescript, I would say, uh, mostly kind of condo or timeshare properties. You have the Polo Towers, the Hilton Grand Vacations. Uh, one thing that uh, I had not noticed previously was that there appears to be some sort of national debt clock. And then adjoining this hotel is city center and most prominently the uh, Waldorf Astoria, formerly known as the Mandarin Oriental, but much like the Park MGM, was recently rebranded as a Waldorf Astoria. We see the pool there at the base and a view of the side of this hotel. And notice that there's no Nomad branding, it's all the Park MGM, but again, all of these upper floors are devoted to this uh, nomad hotel within a hotel. And then, of course, as you enter the Park MGM property, you pass through a Italy location full of uh, Italian eateries, kind of street style eateries, sit down restaurants, an Italian market, and then that flows into the casino. So we'll uh, be checking that out later. Well, that's all for this hotel review. Again, this was the Nomad Hotel at the Park MGM. We're on the 30th floor in a suite with a king bed, room 3067. And in terms of my overall opinion and or recommendation, I would say that uh, if you're looking for something a little bit different, but in a perfect location, um, a luxurious boutique, five-star hotel that hasn't necessarily gotten a lot of press, but again, is located in the heart of the Strip, adjoining city center and the Cosmopolitan and the Bellagio and the New York, New York. I think that this is the perfect place if the price is right. And given all the stutters and starts and stops and different uh, COVID variants and the resulting guidance and rules with respect to occupancy and masking, you will probably see a fairly large fluctuation in prices. So I'm not even going to bother telling you what I paid for this room and I actually don't even recall. But I would say that this will likely be one of my more enjoyable stays on the Las Vegas Strip. And I hope that if you stay here that you feel the same. So with that, happy and safe travels. Until next time, Marsh W13 out.